This talk will be about Cayley's formula for the number of trees with n vertices. So to start, let's just take a look at the number of trees with a small number of vertices. So if we've got one vertex, there's only one possible tree. If we've got two vertices, there's obviously only one possible tree. And if we've got three vertices, there's only one tree. So this is a, seems a bit boring. If we have four vertices, there are two possible trees, looking like that or that. For five vertices, we can have a line of five or a line of four with one sticking out, or we can have all the vertices joined to a central one. So that's three possibilities. Six, it's starting to get a bit complicated. We can have a line of six or a line of five, and then the line of five, we can have the sixth vertex joined to either the middle or the not quite the middle. If we have a line of four, we need to tack on two more vertices, which we can either do like that or like that. Um, and if we have a line of at most three, then we can join them all to a central point like that. So if we count the number of trees, we, we're getting one, 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 um, two, three, six. And there doesn't seem to be any obvious pattern to these. Um, in fact, it's not terribly easy to count trees, and I don't know of any easy formula for them. So uh, the best thing to do is to cheat. Um, when you're counting things, it's an awful lot easier to count things if you weight them by one over the number of symmetries. So this one only has one symmetry, so we count that as one tree, but this one has two symmetries because we can sort of swap the two ends. So we count it as half a tree. And similarly, that's half a tree, that's half a tree. And this one, you see there are six symmetries because we can permute these three points. That's one sixth of a tree. And then we get a half, a half, a half. And here we have 24 symmetries. So we get one over 24. Here we get a half, here we get a half. Here we get one over six again. Here we get one over 120. This one you have to think about a little bit. Um, it actually has eight symmetries because we can twiddle these two points or we can twiddle these two points or we can swap swap it from left to right. Now, if we add the, those all up, we find that the tree on zero points, there's only one. And now there's only half a tree on two points because we're weighting them half and three over six of a tree on three points. I'm putting the six in a denominator because that's three factorial and that's going to be the total number of symmetries if you ignore the lines between points. So for four points that's the sum is two thirds which is 16 over 24. For five points we get 125 over 120 and for six points we get 1296 over 720 as the number of weighted trees. And now um, if you notice, these numbers are now rather obvious. So this is 6 to the 4, 5 cubed, 4 squared, 3 to the 1, 2 to the 0, and I guess 1 to minus 1 as the denominators. Um, and now you can see what the pattern is. Um, the number of um, trees on n points is seems to be n to the n minus 2 over n factorial. Let's see if you count those weighted trees. Now let's explain how to derive this formula. Um, first of all, um, it's slightly easier to count labelled trees and divide the number by n factorial. And this turns out to be the same as counting weighted trees. So what's a labelled tree? Well, a labelled tree um, is just a tree where you label all its points by numbers from 1 to n. So we might label this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, well, and there are n factorial ways to permute these labels. So, but these don't always give you different labeled trees. For example, if I permute the labels 2 and 6, I get this tree here. Now you can see that these two are actually the same tree. And the reason is that this tree has a symmetry group of order 2, which means that um, um, in, in order to get the number of trees from the number of labelled trees, you really have to divide by the order of the symmetry group. 
So if you think about this a little bit, you see that counting weighted trees is the same as counting labelled trees and dividing by n factorial, where n factorial is the number of ways of permuting all the labels. So what we want to do is to show that the number of labelled trees is equal to n to the n minus 2. And I'm going to change this slightly and I want to look at labelled trees plus two special vertices. And the number of these should be n to the power of n because um, picking one vertex there are n choices and picking a second vertex there are also n choices. And notice that the two special vertices might actually be the same vertex. I, I don't really care. And now n to the n is the number of functions from n-point set to an n-point set. So we've got two collections of objects. We've got functions from n-points to itself and we've got labelled trees with two vertices and the numbers of these two sets should be the same. And it's absolutely fundamental idea in combinatorics that if two sets have the same size you should try and find a natural bijection between them. Um, and this is what we're going to do for Cayley's formula. Uh, this is a this natural bijection was found by Andre Joyal. I hope I haven't mispronounced his name too badly. In about 1981, um, and it gives a very nice proof because it's almost a proof where you just draw a picture and don't really need to um, state anything at all. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to recall. Um, what a permutation on a set looks like. So suppose I've got a set of numbers, say 1, 3, 5, 8, 11, and I want to permute these. Um, well, first of all, I write them down in order, and then I want to permute them, so I describe the permutation by, say, writing down what each number goes to. So, so this 3, 8, 11, 1, 5 means the permutation that takes 1 to 3, 3 to 8, 5 to 11, and so on. Um, well, there's a second way to describe a permutation. So this takes 1 to 3, 3 to 8, and 8 to 1. So I could indicate that just by drawing 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 8, and 8 goes to 1. And similarly, 5 goes to 11, and 11 goes to 5. So I should draw 5 here, it goes to 11, and 11 goes to 5. So this is two different ways of indicating this permutation of these five points. Um, and now what I'm going to do is to add some extra junk onto them. So I'm going to make this into some labelled tree by just sort of adding various bits. I might add a sort of big bit on here like that, and I might add on, say, a 10 and a 7 there, and I might add on a 14 and a 15 there. So here I've got a labelled tree on 15 points. And um, I want to sort of, I, I'm going to just transfer all this extra black junk to these diagrams here. So here I've got a 6 joining to a 3, so I have a 6 mapping to a 3. Here I've got this weird junk to attach to 11, so I'm going to attach some weird junk to 11. And I'm going to put little arrows on pointing towards this, this red cycle. And here I've got 1, so I add a 10 and a 7. And here I've got a 14 and a 15. And I'm going to put little arrows on these. And now what you see is that what we have here is a permutation sorry, is, is a function from a 15-point set to a 15-point set because I put little arrows going in towards these cycles and you can see I've now got a well-defined function. It takes 15 to 14, it takes 14 to 5, it takes 5 to 11, and 11 to 5, and so on. And this process gives a bijection between functions on from endpoints to, to themselves and labelled trees except that I've got to add in two special vertices. So I've got to choose a starting vertex for this line and an ending vertex. Um, so um, we now have an explicit 
um, bijection. Here I have 15 to the power of 15 functions from a set of 15 points to itself. And you can see that any function from a from a finite set to itself, um, the, 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 if you start with any point and keep on applying the function, it will eventually end up in some cycle. So any function can be written as um, a sort of collection of red cycles together with some black bits sticking onto them. So you can see you have an explicit constructed bijection between labelled trees and functions from endpoints themselves written in this funny diagrammatic form. So that gives a proof of Cayley's theorem um, um, just as a, a sort of picture. And um, by the way Cayley's formula wasn't actually first proved by Cayley, it was actually first proved by Borchardt um, in about 1860. Um, it's not quite clear why it's called Cayley's formula. I mean Cayley uh, did state it in his paper, so here's his uh, original paper where he's stating the formula and see here he's sort of counting trees on six points and getting this number 1296. And at the end of his paper um, Cayley explicitly states the result was due to Borchardt but I guess a lot of people just didn't notice that and ended up calling it Cayley's formula.